Hello and welcome back to the channel. It still feels weird, you know, saying that. Anyway, I've not posted a video for a while um, and a couple of people asked when the Chiggy AIO 5 Play for BMW video would be ready because um, I've been posting about it on Instagram and unfortunately I'm currently without a bike, which my bike should be right there. Um, but it is not. Um, so this video is going to be uh, regarding why, 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 why that is. Um, so if that sounds like something you want to know about, uh, stay tuned. Um, my bike is broken, basically. Um, so yeah, this video is going to be about that. Okay, first of all, let me start by saying I'm going to choose my words very carefully because this isn't this video isn't intended to be a rant, a moan, a complain. Um, I'm a little disappointed, obviously, you know, if whenever your bike's broken, whatever reason, it's not good. Um, <clears throat> I'm also not going to be naming the BMW, you know, the BMW dealership in question. Um, not for any, not for any sort of negative reasons, but at the end, the end of the day, you're only getting my side of the story here. And they have generally speaking been brilliant and I don't want to damage that relationship by painting a one-sided story um, that is all from my side, basically. So anyway, as anyone who may have seen the other video I did a few months back, I'll put a link in the description or in a card if I can remember how to do it. Um, I put a video out a few months ago about quite a serious issue that I had back in February. So my R1300, um, it's my third, my third, my, it's my third GS that I've had. I had two 1250s prior. Um, and I got my 1300, I think just before Christmas last year. Uh, so just before Christmas of 2023, didn't really ride it very busy over Christmas. The weather wasn't great. Didn't ride it till about mid January. Um, so I did the, you know, 600 miles that it needed for its running in service and it went into the dealer on about the 10th ish of February. Um, all great, rode the bike home and I thought I would give it its first wash and it caught fire. Um, now sounds a bit dramatic. There wasn't, it, there, there wasn't any flames per se, but I caught it just in time and it was the quite well publicized starter relay issue uh, basically at shore you know circuited so that's in the that's in more detail in the other video everything was you know handled very well so we move on uh, since then i've got the bike up to about nine thousand miles um it went in for its six thousand mile service in july prior to a trip away with my partner and I'd been having an intermittent starting issue that a few other people had have actually mentioned. Uh, there's a guy, I think his name's just the way it is or something like that. I think he's a Canadian living in Germany. Um, and he did a couple of videos about this. It's sort of a, a slow start issue, but it's not like the decompression valve quirk that the 1250s have. It's more of a, it just sort of gives up um, and then it won't respond to, to the starter button for maybe 10, 15 seconds. So it had a it had a software update while it was in uh, that hopefully, you know, you know, sorted that out. And to be fair, it more or less got rid of the issue. But then I started having an even worse issue um, where which I'll overlay some video of it now on the screen uh, to illustrate the issue. But effectively, when you switch the bike on, what it normally does is you hear a little sort of whir and a click and the TFT lights up, it goes through its all, you know, make life a ride, you know, etc. And then you get the standard dashboard with the rev counter and all the, the, all the other details. So in my case, when you press uh, the ignition button, you heard the sort of click like a relay and then 
after a couple of after a couple of seconds pause the dash would then you know start up but then what you'd be left with uh, and hopefully it's on screen now um would be a completely red rev counter the box for the riding mode would be empty the temperature would be empty uh no gear indicator etc the bike would start start without any issues whatsoever but the revs didn't change you could ride it and you wouldn't get any speed the indicators didn't work uh, the horn wouldn't work and of the th the three or four maybe five times that it happened um i think i managed to reset it just by switching the bike off and leaving it maybe once or twice the rest of the time i had to disconnect the battery completely which I'm a blood biker as well uh, and unfortunately the first time it happened I was part way through an urgent blood sample run and I couldn't get the screw for the battery terminal off with the screwdriver under the seat um, and I had to wait for a while until a lovely chap lent me uh, a 10 mil socket so you know ever since then I've been sort of carrying one you know with me um, which I had to do that at least another two times when and then I got to the point I thought this is ridiculous this I you know this needs looking at so I contacted the dealer they obviously they you know said we've we've not heard of this issue um wanted me to send a video which I did that was sent off to be a BMW technical uh about a week later they got back to me and said we understand you don't want to ride the bike that's fine can you get BMW assist to recover it to us which I did. Now, I didn't ask for a courtesy bike at this point, but I wasn't offered one either, which I thought a little bit strange. But I didn't expect the bike would be away for long. In fairness, I expected it to come back as no fault found because I have had issues with my first 1250 where I had a lot of electrical gremlins and you know software issues, and mostly they came back as we can't find out what, what's wrong, which isn't the fault of the dealer if they've gone through all of the diagnostics. Um, so anyway, the bike was recovered um, about a week later, um, maybe, a, maybe a little bit more. I did, have, did have, I did have to chase them a couple of times as I wasn't really getting any sort of updates. Um, and they told me that the TFT screen itself needs replacing, which obviously is quite an expensive part, but it's under warranty, that's fine. Um, but the part is on back order from Germany and it's due into Germany Thursday. So it was due in into Germany this Thursday, just gone. Um, and then it would take five to 10 working days to arrive at, to the dealer. Then it would need to be booked into the workshop, which that may take a day, a week, I don't know. It's got to be fitted, it's got to be tested, and obviously proven to have fixed the issue before obviously I can have it back. And if it isn't fixed, more diagnostics. So I asked for uh, a courtesy bike, and I sh maybe should have asked the dealer for clarification on this, so that's on me, but the dealer did neither offered or said they couldn't provide me with a courtesy bike themselves. But what they did say was they'd have, they would have to contact BMW UK to see if they would support me in providing uh, a courtesy bike. Um, now, with other BMW, with the other BMW dealership that I've used in the past, a courtesy bike was always offered because I assume it gets charged back to BMW uh, under the warranty scheme. But anyway. So I eventually got an email to say, I think it was on Friday, to say, because the part is now in transit to the UK, um, BMW are unable to provide you with uh, a courtesy bike. So long story short, by the time I get the bike back, um, which is probably going to be into next week, um, hopefully it fixes the issue and I get it back sometime sometime next week i'm going to have been without the bike for anything up to four to five weeks um so i have raised a complaint with bmw uk not because of the way the dealers handled it but because i personally don't think i should be paying for a bike for for a full month that i've had no use out of and i haven't had 
a courtesy bike. BMW UK have obviously quite rightly said, can we wait until you get the bike back? And then we will look at maybe a gesture of goodwill. So yeah. But yeah, so that's where we're up to. Um, I'm, I only know of one other person that's had this issue, a chap called Mark Hooten, um, who runs Cymark Bike Parts. Lovely guy, really recommend you check out his you, you know, website. And again, I'll put a link down in the description. I imagine anyone who has a GS in the UK probably has heard of him. Not as popular as sort of Nippy Normans, but yeah. Um, and yeah, speaking of Nippy Normans, um, I'm what I'm waiting for the Denali Soundbomb Mini, um, which I'm going to be fitting at some point in the near future. So I'll put a link to that as well. But yeah, so that's why I've not been posting videos. Not that I post a lot anyway, but yeah, I have the Chiggy, uh, that you know, video that I need to need to finish off. I was going to do a kit review video, but I don't know how in how interesting that is. Um, I do ride all year round and I do about 10 to 12,000 miles a year. So, you know, my kit does get used. Uh, you know, if anyone has any comments, whether you'd find that useful, like what kit do I use and how do I rate it? I'll happily do uh, a video of that. I'm also potentially getting the Inov K7 to review soon. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of stuck until I get a bike, uh, well, my bike back. So yes, you know, uh, you know, also if, uh, you know, any of the content that I make is of any use to you and you like, you know, sort of, you know, listening to me repeat the word, you know, all the time to, uh, try to avoid stammering, then please hit the, you know, like and subscribe button. It would be really useful. Uh, and really give me the motivation to try to overcome my uh, my fear of sort of public speaking and actually doing these for you. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I will have some more content soon.